Okay, Algebra 1 students, in this video today we will continue to learn how to solve linear equations, okay? Now I know it sounds like a broken record, and I've said this a lot, but hang in there as we continue to work on these equations. Like I keep saying, I will add to your steps as they get harder, as the equations get harder, but to be honest, the solving linear equations is just not that difficult, okay? So take great notes, follow the steps, and you'll be fine. Here's your heading for today. Like usual, please copy this in your notes. Solving linear equations. Write that down, please. Lesson 3.3. Write that down, please, in your notes. And be sure to include today's date. Solving linear equations. That's your heading. Please copy that in your notes. Lesson 3.3. And today's date. Anytime I go too fast, just pause the video, okay? <coughs> today, we will be changing our steps a little bit. And I told you that's going to happen, okay? So here are the new ones. Please write these down. Now I'm going to move on. So you might want to pause the video. I'm going to read these and move on. Simplify both sides of the equation as far as possible. Easy enough. Eliminate all fractions. We'll talk about that later. Isolate the variable. Got it. So there's your three steps. Now I'm going to move on. Pause the video. Copy those down. Then restart the video. I want to comment to you and talk about steps one and two. Please listen carefully to what I'm about to say. What I'm about to say is so, so important. Every time I teach this lesson, I stress what I'm about ready to stress right now. And students still don't listen. If you do step two first, before you do step one, there is a very, very, very high percentage chance you will miss the problem. Okay, you will get it wrong. You must first simplify both sides of the equations as far as possible before you eliminate fractions. That's the first thing I want to say. So please, students, don't forget that. A lot of students like to jump right in, excuse me, <coughs> and eliminate their fractions. If you do that first before step one, you will probably miss the problem. Number two, this step here is not, it is not important. It's imperative, which is higher than important. Imperative means it's a must. Now, a lot of students don't like this step. They would, they, they would rather leave the fractions in the equation and just solve the equation with the fractions. And I understand that, especially with fraction buttons on calculators nowadays. But here's why you must learn to eliminate fractions, okay? We are going to get into multivariable equations, something like this. <coughs> and if you don't learn how to eliminate this fraction, then you're gonna be stuck on an equation like this. You must know how to eliminate fractions. And I do want you to do that. So if you will trust me, listen to me, and do what I say, you'll be fine, okay? Now, there's really no reason to jump right in. There's really no reason to not jump right into this. So here we go. Let's solve some linear equations. Oh, by the way, like usual, you need to show all of your work on all of these problems in your notes, in your homework, on tests, and on quizzes. Got it? Good. Here we go. Um, let's start with the first problem. If I go too fast, just pause the video. Let's go ahead and copy down this first problem. We're going to go step one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three for every single one of these problems. Step one, simplify both sides, okay? Well, there's nothing you can do with a negative eight, so this side here is totally simplified. This is a one-third x, that's one term. Here's a six, that's one term. Are those two terms like or unlike? They are unlike. One is an x term, and one is a constant term. You cannot combine unlike terms, so there's no simplifying I can do at all. None. Step two, what do your notes say to do? Eliminate fractions. How do you eliminate fractions? It's really, really easy. You look at the bottom of the fraction 
or the denominator. Got it? You look at the bottom of the fraction or the denominator and whatever that number is, you're going to multiply the entire equation by that number. So my denominator is 3, so I'm going to multiply the entire equation by 3. Now, here we go. 3 is the same thing as 3 over 1, so 3 over 1 times 1 third is 1x. 3 times 6 is 18. 3 times negative 8 is negative 24. And, booyah, look at that. All of my fractions are gone. You see, students, you're allowed to multiply an equation by any number you want as long as you do it to the entire equation. Okay? You can multiply an equation by any number you want as long as you do it to the entire equation. So I'm multiplying the entire equation by 3. 3 times 1 third x, 1x. 3 times 6, 18. 3 times negative 8, negative 24. So step 2 is done. I've eliminated my fractions. And by the way, 1x is the same thing as x. Now you can leave the 1 there if you want to. I'm just going to get rid of it. Okay. All right, what's the last step say? Isolate your variable. Okay. So here's your variable. What do I want to get rid of? 18. Now if it was, eight, don't forget, if it was 18x, that's one term. You cannot move the 18 over. You have to divide both sides by 18, okay? Don't forget that. But it's not 18x, it's positive 18. This is two terms. So I can cross this off, bring it over to the other side, and make it negative. So now I'm left with x equals, you owe me 24, you owe me 18 more, that's negative 42. And there's your answer, negative 42. Now, like always, let's quickly check our answer to make sure it's correct, okay? So where the x is, I'm going to put negative 42. So 1 third times negative 42. Positive 6 equals negative 8. Okay, 1 third times negative 42. 1 third times negative 42 over 1. A positive fraction times a negative fraction is negative. 3 cancels into 42, 14 times. 1 times 14 is 14. 1 times 1 is 1. 14 over 1 is 14, so negative 14. So 1 third times negative 14, 42 is negative 14. And now combine these two numbers and you get negative 8 equals negative 8. It checks. Okay. All right, moving on. Next problem. Okay, step one, simplify both sides as far as possible. Obviously, you cannot simplify 24. However, we can simplify this side here. We have like terms. We have a 7x and a 3x. So a positive 7 and a negative 3. You have $7. You owe me 3. You pay off your debt. And you're left with 4x. Please don't put 4x squared. That's incorrect. If you're multiplying x times x, that's when you have x squared, okay? Bring down your negative 8. Now, can I simplify this side any further? No. They're unlike terms. You cannot combine, add, or subtract unlike terms. You can multiply unlike terms. You can divide unlike terms. But you cannot add or subtract unlike terms. So we cannot simplify any further. What step two say in your notes? Eliminate fractions. I don't see any. On to step three, isolate the variable. Now this is a little tricky. We have two numbers to get rid of. If you want to get x by itself, you must get rid of this four. And you must get rid of this negative eight. Correct? So the question is, which one do you get rid of first? Well, I'm going to say this now and I would encourage you to write it down. Always get rid of the coefficient. That's the number with the variable. Last. Always. Always get rid of the coefficient last. So the number with the x, in this case it's a 4, the 4 is with the x. Get rid of the 4 last, okay? Always. Always get rid of the coefficient last, okay? So. Get rid of, so we're going to save the 4 for last. Let's get rid of the negative 8. Let's bring the whole term over and make it a positive 8. So now I'm left with 4x equals 32. Now get rid of your 4. You can't move the 4 over. This is one term, okay? You can't just cross off the 4 and make it a negative. 
negative form. We've talked about that. You cannot split up a term when you are moving things. So what is the 4 doing? The x multiplying. What's the opposite of multiply? Divide. What number are you trying, trying to get rid of? 4. So you divide by the number you're trying to get rid of, which is 4. These cancel. x equals 8. There's your answer. x equals 8. Let's check and make sure we did it correctly. Okay, here we go. Everywhere there's an x, I'm going to put an 8. 7 times 8, negative 3 times 8, negative 8 equals 24. All right, let's do our multiplication first. 56, negative times a positive is negative 24. Bring down your negative 8. Now, let's simplify this side. I've got two, let's add up all my negatives and all my positives. I've got a positive 64 and a negative 32. You owe me 24, you owe me 8, eight more, you owe me 32. Now you have $56, you pay off 32, and you're left with positive 24. It checks. Okay, all right, moving on to the next problem. One thing about a video class, I'm going too fast, all you have to do is pause the video, okay? All right, here we go. Step one, simplify both sides. Step one, simplify both sides. Well, I could do nothing to this side. However, over here, I've got quite a bit I can do. First of all, I can take my three and I can multiply it through the parentheses. Remember, you can multiply unlike terms. That's fine, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. Let's bring down your 5x. Take your positive 3 and multiply it through. Positive 3 times a positive x is a positive 3x. Positive 3 times a positive 4 is a positive 12. Now you're seeing, now you are seeing why we learned all this information in the last chapter so we could apply it to equations, okay? Now we're still not finished. Look at this. We can do some more simplification. Look at these rules back here, guys. Simplify both sides, what? As far as possible. Over and over until you're finished, okay? So we have a positive five and a positive three. That's a positive eight x. Please don't put x squared. You're not multiplying. Bring down your positive 12. Bring down your equal sign. Bring down your 28. Okay, last, next step, get rid of fractions or eliminate fractions. I don't see any fractions, so we're good. Go on to the next step. Isolate the variable. Well, look. Um, <coughs> excuse me. I see two numbers I want to get rid of, an 8 and a 12. Okay, remember, always save the coefficient for last, so we're going to save this 8 for last. So bring your positive 12 over and make it a negative 12. 8 x equals 16. Now the 8 is multiplying times the x. The opposite of uh, multiply is divide. Divide by 8 because you're trying to get rid of the 8. And x equals 2. 16 divided by 8 is 2. Okay. Now let's check our answer and see if we did it correctly. Okay. Everywhere there's an x, we're going to put a 2. Here's an x. So 5 parentheses 2. Bring down your positive 3. Then right here we have a 2 and then a positive 4 equals 28. All right, now, if you want to go ahead and put a 10 right here, that's fine. No, I have no problem with that. Now let's go ahead and let's simplify inside of our parentheses here. A positive 2, positive 4, positive 6. Notice the 3 is still being multiplied times the positive 6, okay? 3 times this quantity, and your quantity is 6. So now I have 10 plus 18, or 10 positive 18 equals 28. And then I have 28 equals 28. Check. Okay. All right, moving on. You can work ahead or watch me if you want to, okay? This is pretty much the same problem all over again, so if you want to work ahead, that's fine. Step one, simplify both sides, okay? Now, there's nothing I can do to this side. However, the left side, there's quite a bit I can do. First, I can take this negative 3. Now, notice, students, listen. It's a negative 3 that you're multiplying through, so watch your signs. Okay? Bring down your 4x. Now, take your negative 3 and multiply it through the parentheses, or distrib distribute it through the parentheses. Negative times a positive is negative. 3 times x is 3x. Negative times a negative is positive. 3 times 2 is 6. Okay, we're still not done simplifying. We have like terms right here. We have a positive 4 and a negative 3. That's a positive 1x. So I took these two like terms. 
terms, I combined them and I got this right here, the 1x. Now, I don't need the 1x so or the 1, so I'm going to get rid of the 1. Okay, here we go. Step 2, eliminate fractions. Well, do you see any fractions here? I don't. So we're good. Let's move on then. Last step, isolate the variable. Okay, pretty simple. Bring the 6 over and make it a negative 6. x equals 15. There's your answer. x equals 15. 21 minus 6 or 21 negative 6. Let's check our answer and make sure we're accurate on this. 4 parentheses 15 and then negative 3 parentheses 15 minus 2. Let's check our work and make sure we're doing it correctly, okay? Here we go. 
um, where there's an x, I'm going to substitute negative 58. So 66 equals negative 6 fifths, parentheses, negative 58, positive 3. So next I would have negative 6 fifths. Uh, you owe me $58, and you have 3, so you pay off part of your debt, and you still owe me this much. Okay, so now I have negative 6 fifths times negative 55, so negative 6 fifths times negative 55 over 1. Alright, well first of all, a negative times a negative is positive, and secondly, your 5 would go under your 55 11 times. 6 times 11 is 66. 1 times 1 is 1. So 66 over 1 would be 66. So look what I get. 66 equals 66. Okay, so my answer is negative 58. If I'm going too fast, let's back it up once again. Now, probably a lot of you guys have this one question just lingering in your mind. Lingering in your mind. In this problem here, I had a fraction with a denominator of 3. In this problem here, I had two fractions, both with a denominator of 5. What do I do when my denominators are different? And I'm trying to eliminate fractions. Well, I'm glad you asked that question. And we're going to look at a problem like that now, okay? So here we go. Okay, step one, let's simplify both sides. You cannot simplify this side here. I have an x term and a constant term. You cannot combine them. I can, however, simplify this side. I can take my 5, 6 and multiply it through. Okay? So five, let's bring this down first of all over here. 1 half x, negative 2 thirds. Now, 5, 6 times 2x. In other words, you have 5, 6 times 2. Alright? 5, 6 times 2. Well, your 2 is going to become, uh, your 2 is going to go into 6 times. So you're left with 5 times 1, 3 times 1, 5 thirds. So 5, 6 times 2 is 5 thirds. And of course, don't forget your x right here. 5 thirds x. Then we're going to take a positive times a negative, which is negative. And then we're going to take 5, 6 times 4. 5, 6 times 4. I'm not worried about the fact that it's a negative 4. I already, I already took care of the negative sign here. A positive times a negative is negative. So 5, 6 times 4 over 1. 2 goes into both of those numbers. 2 goes into 2, 4 times. 2 goes into 6, 3 times. 10 thirds. So negative 10 thirds. There we go. Alright. Now, can I simplify this side any further? Well, you tell me. Do I have like or unlike terms here? Like or unlike? They're unlike. One is an x term, one's a constant term. So, I cannot simplify this any further, nor can I simplify, uh, nor can I simplify this side either. So, on to step two, eliminate fractions. Now, I have denominators of two and three, so do I multiply two or do I multiply, do I multiply by three? Well, here's what you do. Even though, now is everybody listening, I will make this very simple if you'll listen carefully. You are not trying to find a common denominator. Okay, you're not. But if you were trying to find a common denominator, what's a common denominator for 2 and 3? Well, it's obviously 6, right? What's the smallest number that 2 and 3 both go into? 6. So there's your common denominator, 6. So even though you're not trying to find a common denominator, you pretend that you are. You get that number in your head, and that's the number. Everybody got it? That's the number you multiply through. Now, listen, if all of my denominators had been a 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, that you had multiplied the entire equation by 3, if all of my denominators had been 2, 2, 2, and 2, that you would multiply the entire equation by 2, no problem. But when your denominators are different, you've got to find the number that would be your common denominator and multiply that through. So here we go. 6 over 1 times 1 over 2, your 2 would cancel into your 6 3 times. 3 times 1, 1 times 1, that's 3x. 
3x. 6 over 1 times 2, well first of all you have a positive times a negative, that's negative. 6 over 1 times 2 over 3, your 3 would cancel into your 6. 2 times, 2 times 2 is 4, 1 times 1 is 1, 4 over 1, so you would have 4. Okay, next we would have a positive times a positive is positive. 6 over 3 times 5 over 3, your 3 goes into 6 2 times. 2 times 5 is 10, 1 times 1 is 1, 10 over 1 is 10. And then last but not least, a positive times a negative is negative. And your 6 over 1 times 10 over 3, your 3 would cancel into your 6, 2 times. 2 times 10 is 20, 1 times 1 is 1, 20 over 1 is 20. And there should be an X right here, shouldn't there be? I apologize because 6 times 5 thirds X is 10 X. There should be an X here. Sorry about that. Now, um, actually, I probably should not have given you this problem yet because we haven't learned how to do these. So, but that's okay. We'll go ahead and just finish it up together and you won't have one like this on your homework, okay? We're going to learn how to do these later, but I'll go ahead and show you real quick. Um, you want to bring your 10x over. Don't worry if you don't understand this, okay? I'm not going to give you one like this until later. Bring your 10x over make it a negative 10x. So now you have negative 7x. Bring your negative 4 over and make it a positive 4. And you're left with negative 16. Now I am not surprised that this problem did not come out to a whole number because I made this up quickly and just threw some numbers together, so I'm not surprised. And then lastly, divide by negative 7. And your answer would be a positive 16 sevenths. Okay? Positive 16 sevenths. Or if you wanted, 2 and 2 sevenths. Alright? Or if you wanted, 2 point, uh, uh, let's see, 2 point 2. I think something like that, 2.28 rounded. Okay, any of those answers are sufficient. All right, and that's it. So don't be discouraged if you're a little confused from here down. From here down, okay, that we've never done one like that. That's fine, the main thing I want you to see here is um, how to eliminate fractions when you have different denominators, okay? That's the main thing I wanted you to see here. All right, guys, that's it. I hope you're learning these steps. I hope you're learning what we're doing here. If you have any questions at all, please do not hesitate to call or email.